the weekend. Welcome again to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. It's a cricket program where we look at the sport not only in the region but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson. With me is my co-host Andrew Seeley and what a week it promises to be because the Lyman Call Caribbean Premier League is in full swing. We're going to look at how things are happening. But on today's program, Andrew, this youngster, Craig oh. Braffitt, yeah, he has been doing so well for the West Indies. He's on the show today. We're going to hear from the young man who scored uh, his first test century recently and also followed up with a half century in Barbados. Well, certainly, Barry, and he's probably got about 40 plus centuries now, but certainly <laughs> the biggest one yeah. was the one against New Zealand, and he'll be telling us all about it. Also on the show today, we heard his voice throughout the entire commentary uh, when the New Zealanders were here, and I'm sure we're going to hear it some more in the Lima Call CPL. Philip Hackett, a uh, voice that you might know, but a face that you will perhaps um, be now learning. He's on yeah, the show today. You're not familiar with No, you're yes. not familiar with Philip no, Hackett. We're going to make face. you familiar with Philip Hackett we, now. I hope you can uh, digest and ingest <laughs> what we're going to show you. I sh it shouldn't be a problem, should it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely not. Not he's on my Matthew friend, So I can say that. But he's going to be looking back at that we versus them series and how the Windies feared and perhaps given his reasons why they didn't cross the tape in the first T20 and then the second one where they feared much better. All to look forward to this week on Mass United Insurance's line and length plus England and India live and exclusive on Sportsmax that's going to push some bells for some people. And certainly I think there's a cook that's in trouble at the moment. Uh, and Alistair Cook, he's on, he's on the cusp. Shane Warren says he should go. Jeffrey Boycott's not sure. So there are certainly Alistair Cook in some trouble. Indeed, we're going to look at that series and how things are shaping up. All to show you, don't move a muscle when we come back. Mass United Insurance's London Lev gets cooking. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Caribbean, we do things a little differently. Okay, a lot differently. Our parties are bigger and more colorful. Our people are more beautiful and more sensual. Our fans are more expressive and loud. And our cricket, our cricket is exhilarating. Lima Call CPL, the biggest party in sport, is back. And it's time to come see the stars of West Indies cricket alongside the best international players in T20. Peterson, Mulitharan, Hafiz, and many more when the Lima Call CPL returns from 11th July to 16th August. The Caribbean comes alive with partying, dancing, cheering, and the thrill of the Lima Call Caribbean Premier League. It's time to join the biggest party in sport. See CPLT20.com for details. It's how we play. heats up across the region in the Limacol Caribbean Premier League T20. There's only one way to keep your cool. Limacol. Limacol. The freshness of a breeze in a bottle. We're back on the program. Welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. Well, with us is Philip Hackett. Philip, of course, has been doing commentary for eons, of course, uh, in Barbados and throughout the West Indies. And it's finally good to have you on the program, Philip, because you would have done commentary for this last series, the We Versus Them. I want to talk a little bit about the T20 series. We reviewed the Test Series last week. Let's talk a bit about the T20 series. I want your thoughts, first of all, on... The West Indies being uh, once world champions, do you think that they played with the same kind of gusto that we thought they might have? I think you've got to develop a rhythm in just with anything. And uh, unfortunately, I suppose some may say fortunately, a lot of these T20 series are very short. Um, there is no build up in terms of um, lots of match preparation. So it's like assembling players together and you're off and running immediately. Um, coupled with that, I don't think the weather really would have helped uh, in that first game. 
So I wouldn't really panic if the, the guys weren't on, on top of the game to start. Well, certainly, uh, Philip, we observed the, the both games, and we've been talking a bit about West Indies, and you said rhythm, but we have had the same group of players for a little while now. I would think that by now they should know each other very well and know how to play together. Yeah, that, that's true, but um, at the same time, I think you've got to look at every situation, every match, every series. And uh, personally, I would like to see a, a T20 series of at least three matches. If you really want to get the players yeah. at their best, and, and you know, some teams have to, to work themselves into a contest. And I think it's good for the spectators as well, because you could have a team losing a first match, let's say, and coming back to win the next two, and all that adds to the intrigue, the excitement. Uh, I'm not really in favor of the, the one-off T20s and the two-match games and so on. I think really and truly, a T20 should really be the easiest form of cricket to organize. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of baffled why they tend to be so short. Well, let's take you back to lovely Dominica Windsor Park, of course. The very first game was hampered by rain. Both captains did complain about the uh, conditions and what have you. Second to 20, the West Indies fared much better. Um, I'm going to come down the, the line and ask you first of all about Dwayne Smith. He's been highly touted, played for the Chennai Super Kings and did tremendously well. Only two games that you correctly said. What do you think or what do you make of how he, he was beginning to shape up? Because he, he seemed a bit cold. Dwayne Smith is, is, a, is a mystery, I suppose, to, to all West Indian cricket fans. Whenever you think that he has crossed the line, so to speak, he leaves you not being so sure. <laughs> and I think it's come down to the fact that I don't know if he's fully recognized that he doesn't really have to do a, a whole lot to be able to dominate a cricket game. Yeah, he's just uh, naturally mm -hmm. talented. Therefore, naturally the talented. longer he stays at the crease, the, the runs will, will come. come. If Dwayne Smith opening the batting finds himself at the crease in the 15th over of an innings, I really pity the bowlers he, he, he's playing against. But he seems to come out as though he's always in a hurry. Yes, you've got to get the team off to start, but you, you don't necessarily have to overdo it. And I think he still has to find that, that, um, that right pacing at the international level. What, what about uh, Lendl Simmons, uh, Philip? There, we would have imagined that the combination of Simmons and Smith at the top, both of them haven't done so well. Especially with Gail being quote-unquote rested. Absent. Yeah, yeah, absent. Whatever. <laughs> rested, absent. And the combination of Simmons and Smith at the top, post the IPL, where both of them did very, very well. I think most fans would have been quite disappointed by the performance of both of them. No doubt. At least you saw a bit of Simmons in, what, the second game? Yes. And that, mm. that was, you know, reassuring. But, yeah, that would have been a major disappointment. They have done well. In the case of Simmons, I suppose, somewhat surprisingly, um, <laughs> many may have... Uh, um, I say surprisingly, this is not to, to throw any damp on his ability as a cricketer, but I don't think that Simmons really would be the top pick by, let's say, an international side or... or Even or though he just did so well for the Mumbai Indians? No, I'm talking about before that. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what yeah, prior, prior. Was that, um, prior to that, I think he would have been a surprise selection to many people for, for the Mumbai Indians, Indians yes. um, and he did it extremely well. Mm -hmm. So I think he has already broken new ground now and he, he set a standard that he has to maintain. But um, that's why he said it was somewhat surprising. We've seen him even in the four-day games and the one-day games battling with some enterprise, but I don't think anyone ever really labeled him a, a T20 specialist. I think you've got to accept now that he's, you know, uh, revealed another aspect of his cricket. <laughs> well, the man that's behind us on the screen, Andre Fletcher, man of the series, he got two back-to-back -back man of the match awards, and he certainly came consistent, even if it's just for two matches. What is it about Andre Fletcher that um, manages, manages to get him runs? Because he had appeared in his career where people were saying, does he have shares in the team because he's been failing and failing, still keeps being reselected, but he's turned the corner in the, the last weekend that which, we've seen. Which it. corner is that? Well, the, from Warner Sorry. Park, from, I, from Warner Park, uh, just uh, around to the, Windsor Park. To Windsor Park. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, the thing about Audrey Fletch, I, I think the West Indies Cricket Board, the coaches and, and the administrators really um, could see him at this point in time as a success story because they've kept him around. He has worked extensively, as far as I'm aware, with the HPC and, and, mm -hmm. and with the regional coaches. And uh, he produced the goods on that occasion. Now, sometimes we get carried away and we believe that a player has arrived because of a couple of consistent performances. So we can only measure him by what he's done so far. And I don't think anyone can be disappointed with what we've seen from Andrea Fletcher. What we need to remember though, I think sometimes we expect a bit too much of our regional players given what we have in the Caribbean. Now, um, a player, let's say, for Australia or England, even India, and, and some of the other international countries, they play a lot more cricket. And if I can use an example, if I can borrow from the, the test situation to, just to make the point, you had young German Blackwood uh, being called up you know, for the West Indies team. 
and he's been around a couple of seasons at the regional level, but the amount of matches he has played is equivalent to the average player in one English season. So in terms of the amount of cricket that is being played, our players get a lot less. In terms of the professional structure, in the, let's say in the English countries, for example, we don't have that here necessarily at the regional level. Yeah. So therefore, it will very often take longer. And I find that sometimes we're a bit impatient with our players. So all credit to the handlers of Andrea Fletcher, because it seems he's now producing the goods. But he, he has been a wrong, if we, if we continue. Yeah. He started with Stamford and did That's very, right. very well. In fact, he was, part of, he was part of the, the winning Stamford combination. And at that stage, we perhaps thought that we would have gotten more from Andrea Fletcher than he's given us uh, come 2014. In fact, he was probably seen as the alternative to a Ramden or Ball as a test keeper and Fletcher to fit into the role of the one day or T20 wicket keeper and batsman. Fair comment, but again, you, you've got a situation where sometimes we expect too much too soon. We see a player, he looks good, and we immediately have all these expectations. And if you're patient, sometimes it will bear fruit. But there are times when, you know, it will just pump Peter out and, and we'll make much of it. We, we see it all the time um, in West Indies cricket where you have young players coming in and they do well. If you go back to, to Darren Sammy, your very good friend, um, mm -hmm. when he was what, I think he was less than 20, when he really performed well at the regional level, immediately called up to the West Indies. No, I should say since then, you've had people, you know, berating him and pulling down his ability. And the next 18 or 19 year old who does the same thing, we have great expectations and the cycle continues. But really and truly, you've got to recognize this is West Indies cricket. It is what it is. And in terms of the standard, maybe, you know, some of us believe that it's not what it used to be and it's certainly less than it should be. So you can only measure the players based on what you see. Now, when you take them and put them at the international arena, you may not get those results. It takes a long time sometimes to make that transition. Yeah, very good point. Now, Andrew was uh, going and going about the catch that was taken just on the boundary when Kyron Pollard was dismissed. Well, let's look at that catch. A, a tremendous catch it was. Um, you would have to say, Andrew, short tournament, but that was the catch of the series. Well, certainly, uh, and, and he's a big player. And big Although players, it's become a bit of a cliche now yeah, seeing the catch of the ball, series, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. IPL. So many catches yeah, there were there. Yeah. I mean, Pollard's catch, for instance. But, but what we're saying is that big players usually, usually mm -hmm. deliver big results. And uh, Anderson has been outstanding. Uh, he's come, burst onto the scene literally, Philip. And I think perhaps you'd want to say a few things about him because he certainly has burst onto the New Zealand scene and, in fact, the world scene. He has. But again, you've got to give him time and see what he produces in the long run. I've mm -hmm. seen enough um, cricketers at the international level in all forms. You have your spinners, you have your fast bowlers. Um, there was a, a spinner, wasn't it, Harwani, who took... Uh, Narendra Harwani. Narendra Harwani. Harwani. He, he took 16 wickets, 16, wickets, 16, 16 eight, wickets against eight, eight, the West Indies. Like yep, that's and right. how many matches did he play after that? Uh -huh. You know, so sometimes, <laughs> you know, you get players who will come on and they will start in a, in a dynamic. And part of the reason for that could be, uh, first of all, let me say that to play at the international level and perform, you must be talented. Mm -hmm. That's not an issue. But then, when you really look at it, they're, they're not known. And if they're not known, it's difficult to plan for them. Okay. Now, when mm -hmm. you become troublesome no mm -hmm. and people plan for you, how you respond will then determine Determined your success. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some players who, who really can't respond to, yes. to, to you know, the, the things that are put in place for them. And that's really the problem. All right. Uh, we're going to continue on the show before, we, uh, before Philip leaves. Uh, a lot of people have been asking and, and writing to us about why the West Indies selectors uh, persist with Sheldon Cottrell in a T20 setup. He might have answered some of the critics with a pretty incisive spell of bowling. He took three wickets. But are you, are you, I should say, are you convinced, Philip, that Sheldon Cottrell is a T20 bowler? Because he's also been tried in test cricket as well. I think given the manner in which he came on the scene and attracted attention, it's only fair that he gets the opportunity because it mm. was in the T20 format mm -hmm. that he captured they the delivered. imagination of, of, you know, of most Caribbean people. So I think it's only fair that, that they try with him and give him the opportunity. I was a bit more concerned when he was exposed um, in the, in the, in the um, longer formats. Right. Um, but in terms of the T20, I think you can work with him. And, uh, you know, th again, the problem is how much T20 cricket do we really play? Yeah. And it would be in his best interest to use as many opportunities as, as possible to, to get that T20 exposure. Of course, unless he comes up big 
let's say in the CPL, those opportunities are going to be limited. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, you're really between a rock and a hard place. Wonderful stuff. We're going to keep Philip on. And uh, when we come back, we're going to also have a quick look at the Lima Call CPL, which is in full swing. And we're also going to hear a bit later on in the program from Craig Brathett. You're watching Mass United Insurance's Lina Lev. Don't move a muscle. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. In the Caribbean, we do things a little differently. Okay, a lot differently. Our parties are bigger and more colorful. Our people are more beautiful and more sensual. Our fans are more expressive and loud. And our cricket, our cricket is exhilarating. Lima Call CPL, the biggest party in sport, is back. And it's time to come see the stars of West Indies cricket alongside the best international players in T20. Peterson, Mulitharan, Hafiz, and many more when the Lima Call CPL returns from 11th July to 16th August. The Caribbean comes alive with partying, dancing, cheering, and the thrill of the Lima Call Caribbean Premier League. It's time to join the biggest party in sport. See CPLT20.com for details. It's how we play. The battle heats up across the region in the Lima Call Caribbean Premier League T20. There's only one way to keep your cool. Lima Call. Lima Call. The freshness of a breeze in a bottle. Welcome back to Mass United Insurance's line and length. Philip Hackett continues to be with us, doing a great job as a cricket commentator throughout the Caribbean. Lima Call CPL. Yeah. The biggest party in sport. It is back. And uh, many people are saying, well, the pomp and pageantry like 2013 is not there, but there still seems to be a, a tremendous amount of interest. Your thoughts on this year's tournament starting in Grenada? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the pomp and pageantry, to put it, that's a, all a part of it. But at the end of the day, it's a cricket game. And true cricket lovers will appreciate a cricket spectacle for what it is on the field. Correct. So when you get past the fact that the, the trappings are not there, um, the success that this season um, will have will depend on what the players can produce. Last uh, season, you had a situation where I think many of the international players were disappointing. Uh, if you look at the names that have been added this time, I suspect that you know we, we've got a, a good contest in store for us. What, what we have done this time, or what has actually been done by them, call CPL and their people, is that they have got more current players. Mm -hmm. Last time we had some players who have obviously passed their best, Ricky Ponting, Muir Litheran, Daniel Vittori. None of these guys are back this time. What we have now are some more current players which should obviously make the competition even more competitive. Yeah, uh, I like Jimmy Newsom, for example. Um, yeah. He uh, should be an exciting prospect from what we saw of him in mm -hmm. the recent, uh, recent series and so on. Um, you know, so I think... Uh, in terms of the international players, a lot to look forward to. And the regional players stand to learn a lot from them. And that's going to be important for the development of cricket in the region. A little disappointing for you, Philip, that the tournament, because of its structure and the nature of it being a private enterprise, it means that several younger players who may have had the opportunity to play for their national teams won't get involved because we have the international players. So it means that it's a basically a very small unit of players traveling around playing in the nine, I think the nine games a piece. Yes. Uh, per team this year, which is an, an increase from last year. But it means that the nucleus of the team tends to feature players that we already know what they can do and what they can yeah, give. Yeah, that is my biggest disappointment with the whole thing. In fact, when I was following the domestic T20 competition, I kept saying to myself and, and sometimes to others, where is this really going? What is in it for these players? Because uh, previously, you would have a player, let's say, in the, in the Barbados domestic competition, doing well for his club. 
he's got the chance, uh, even on the, the strength of, of a couple of good performances, mm -hmm. to make it to the Barbados team. And if he's really good, then he can show what he's made of. And all of a sudden, he could be at the West Indies level. And, and who knows what can happen after that. That opportunity is not really there in the same way now. And that concerns me a lot. So that those players who do get to interact with the international players, who do get to play at this level, yes, there's a lot in it for them. But it means that the pool is going to be a lot smaller. All right. So the biggest party in sport is not only back, it's on. The Lyman Call CPL will be hearing much more about that on the program. We're going to say bye to Philip for now. When we come back, a youngster who's not playing in the CPL, but he certainly made an impression in the last test series. Craig Brathard is with us when we come back on Mass United Insurance's Line and Net. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Heats up across the region in the Limacol Caribbean Premier League T20. There's only one way to keep your cool. Limacol. Limacol. The freshness of a breeze in a bottle. In the Caribbean, we do things a little differently. Okay, a lot differently. Our parties are bigger and more colorful. Our people are more beautiful and more sensual. Our fans are more expressive and loud. And our cricket, our cricket is exhilarating. Lima Call CPL, the biggest party in sport, is back. And it's time to come see the stars of West Indies cricket alongside the best international players in T20. Peterson, Mulitharan, Hafiz, and many more when the Lima Call CPL returns from 11th July to 16th August. The Caribbean comes alive with partying, dancing, cheering, and the thrill of the Lima Call Caribbean Premier League. It's time to join the biggest party in sport. See CPLT20.com for details. It's how we play. We're back for the last lap on this week's Mass United Insurance's line and length. With us now, Craig Brathwaite. We, we saw how well he batted against uh, New Zealand for the West Indies. And Craig, we didn't get a chance to tell you this. I mean, it happened a couple of weeks ago. But congratulations on making your, your first of what Ian Bishop, as he would say, I would coin his phrase, what could be first of many test entries. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, obviously, you know, working hard in your nets. I'm obviously looking to get many more. You know, Andrew, you asked him this prior to where we started, and I would reiterate it. You have been criticized for batting slowly, but we, we saw a different Craig Brathwaite in this test series, one looking a bit more positive. What has been the, the thought behind that? Well, I mean, obviously in the first half season, you know, he scored about 390s. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought, you know, especially sometimes I could have really pressed on and get a little more runs. So just he said it, obviously I had a week at HPC and then we played Bangladesh A. Obviously, talking to Sylvia Richards and up here was good as well. So, I mean, if any nets, you know, face lost Spain, you know, was positive to it. And I just said, we'll stick to that and win the game and, and did it. Uh, uh, Craig, I, I, wanna be, I don't want to be there for the point of view becoming a little more aggressive. We have sat in the stands at Kensington Oval and other grounds in the region. And people say, yes, we love Craig Braffitt, but he takes too long to score runs. Have you heard this often? And how, what, what has that done to your psyche? Yeah. Well, I mean, I hear it all the time, but I, mean, I, I, know, I know my game. Right. I know what I can do, and I just go there and do it. It's simple as that. I don't, I don't take on what people say. Right, clearly not. Uh, the New Zealand bowlers, uh, we obviously, with, with Shane Bond as the coach, I mean, obviously outstanding uh, international fast bowler. Both Bolt and Southie, quite good bowlers. What did you think of them facing, you going out to face Bolt and Southie? Well, I always know it's going to be a challenge, especially, you know, with Bolt swinging in, body ball into right handers, but... I mean, I just said a place ball is smart, watch it as long as possible. You know, to, to judge, judge its length, especially in your ball, to leave a lot of balls. And I mean, it, it worked out in the end. 
You know, Craig, you're only 21 years old. You have a lot of cricket left in you. A lot of test cricket is not played by the West Indies. I mean, this year you will play um, against Bangladesh and then uh, if you continue to do well, South Africa. What is your plan in terms of perhaps trying to get into a, a one-day international setup, which might be giving you some more cricket throughout the year? Because test cricket, West Indies only play about six or seven tests, if so many, in a year. Well, obviously working, you know, to do well in the Super 50 for Barbados. I mean, that was my, my next biggest goal. I mean, just about going there and, you know, dominating. Uh, I mean, from there, obviously, you know, the game has seen is one day team sometimes. So, so one day cricket is part of Craig Braffitt's aim? Yeah, for sure. I'm T20. I'm T20? Oh, look at that. But Craig, if we go back, you captained a Barbados team this year that captured the regional four-day tournament. At the start of the season, when the selectors announced, or the BCA announced that Craig Braffitt was going to captain the team, you would have been the youngest member of the team, I believe, or maybe j j the second youngest. Um, what sort of challenge did you see before you when they named you as captain of Barbados team? <laughs> well, I mean, first I know it wasn't going to be easy, mm -hmm. but I mean, I know, I know the group of guys, and I know any day that they have a lot of respect for me, and you know they they, they will listen. I just said, you know, I captained a few teams before, and obviously talking to some senior players that to learn, and I just go there and do it to the best of my ability. Now the pink ball is something that many people around the world are watching feverishly because the first ever pink ball test match is set to be played uh, next season in Australia. You have played a couple of pink ball matches, regional first class cricket. Your thoughts on that? Do you think it will really take off? Is it that popular? Well, I, I don't think so. Me personally, I find the pink ball is a lot harder than the red ball. So it's a lot more, you know, it hits the ball a lot harder. It feels quite weird, I guess. It's something you got to get accustomed to. So. I mean, we just play one game in first half season with it, so I mean that 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 isn't enough to you know, to go into a test arena and, and feel comfortable playing it. But it's nothing. It's not. It's nothing that I really enjoy. Now, what is Craig Braffitt's goal for the West Indies and for Barbados within the next uh, short term period, within the next five years? Because you want to be 26 within that period. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for Barbados, obviously, you know, if I get that like captaincy, just to lead lead from the front, both as a skipper and as a batsman and. The best thing is that you talk to your I mean, Hopefully, you just go out there and, and, and looking to score, score big runs. Final question, Andrew, because uh, many people have, have, might have asked you this and we discussed it. Is Shivnari Shandapal your, your mentor? Because people have said that. Oh, I, I've, I've heard Phil Hackett say it on radio. Is, is, is Shandapal your mentor? Do you, do you typify yourself after him? I, well, I want to say he's my mentor. He's some, someone I look up to. He's one of my favorite batsmen. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, in the can, I, I taught him a lot, uh, or as much as possible. And, Obviously, a lot of how he goes about his work and just try to, you know, obviously, you know, he, he bats quite long in the nets, yeah. but that's not something me necessarily do or somebody necessarily do, but I mean, he's, I, I, he's one of my favorite batsmen, but he's, I wouldn't say he's my mentor. Well, one last question, uh, Craig, and we're going to raise it now. You mentioned to us before, 69 centuries is it that you've scored? You've got one test century so far now. Craig Braffitt's goal, how many test centuries are you looking to score? <laughs> and you probably got 15 years of test cricket in front of you. Well, I mean, I would say at least, at least 20 test centuries would be good. That's all? <laughs> yeah, for me. Uh -huh. Let's take it and see how it goes. All right, great stuff. It's good to have Craig Braffitt. Earlier we saw uh, Philip Hackett. We're out of time. Don't forget you can reach us by email cricket at lineandlength.net or on Twitter, follow us at Line Length. You're watching Mass United Insurance's Line and Length. That's it for another week. We look forward to the continuation of the Lyme McCall CPL and we'll be continuing to discuss that next week. And don't forget England in a big test series against India. Bye-bye for now.